أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علمنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت الأليم الحكيم ففهمنا سليمان وكلنا تينا حكم وعلم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل أقدة من لساني يفقه قولي لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الألي الأذيم سبحانك لا مو هنانيك ألم لا تنسني ولا تنسني الحمد لله أفضل الحمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وسائر نبي المصالحين وسلم على موفقني وحدني وسددني وجمالي بين الصواب والثواب وعذني من الخط والهرمان آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another episode of questions and answers I'm your host Amjid Muhammad and I will be with you for what remains of this hour uh, until 8 p.m. insha'Allah ta'ala and uh, well it's questions and answers that's what this is uh, that's what we were introduced when we came on air and so please do call 01274214299 that's 01274214299 last week was a little bit quiet and I thought you know what Wednesday went with no call Thursday went with no call Friday started with no call and I thought uh oh looks like we're gonna go all three days without a call and then alhamdulillah we had a sort of a minor avalanche of several calls uh, before we went off air. So please, let's not wait till Friday. Uh, let's get some calls in nice and early. Um, 01274-214299. If, on the other hand, you wish to email, uh, then please do email uh, on uh, amjad.muhammad. Okay, that's A-M-J-A-D. I thought somebody was emailing me. That's how I'm checking my phone and checking my watch. Amjad.Mohammed. That's A-M-J-A-D dot M-O-H-O. M-O-H-A-M-M-E-D at al-khair dot org. A-L-K-H-A-I-R dot org. Please do get your emails in. Uh, as soon as you email, I will get a notification on my phone and I can actually read those questions out live here in the studio and you can listen to them as I read them out and I answer them. Also bear in mind that if for whatever reason you miss your question, you email it and unfortunately you have to go out or your phone rings or something happens in the house which preoccupies you, then don't worry, don't fret. Uh, the video, the live sessions will go on Iqra TV's YouTube channel the very next day. Uh, so if within 24 hours, inshallah, uh, you will be able to see this episode on Iqra TV's YouTube channel. The only day in which there's a slight delay is obviously the Friday uh, because we finished the live recording late in the evening and then everybody's gone home. Uh, so we have to wait then till Monday morning when the offices reopen uh, for somebody to then upload that video onto the YouTube channel. So you have so many ways to access, ask your questions and listen to your answers. On top of that, as you know, I am here in the offices during the day as I was this morning and uh, somebody did call me, uh, 01274214283 is during the day, but the studio number is the one that ends in 99. And uh, I got a call and uh, it was a young lady who had been married for a month. Can you believe it? Only a month. And obviously she was finding her marriage very challenging. And we discussed for you know nearly half an hour, 45 minutes about ways that she can deal uh, with her issues, uh, with her concerns that she is obviously uh, dealing with. Uh, so you have many ways to pose your questions here. Uh, we were also planning, uh, got the uh, leaflets and everything ready now, uh, had some letters that we were preparing as well, alhamdulillah. So slowly, inshallah. Big launch for January in the various projects that we will be doing here from Al Khair. If you are in the local area, as in in the Yorkshire area, because we are in Bradford, I am in Bradford, then you can still get your clothes across to uh, Al Khair Foundation's uh, office here in Bradford on Manchester Road. Having said that, even if you are situated anywhere near one of the eight um, drop off points across the country, and I can't remember all of them, Croydon, East London, Birmingham, Glasgow, obviously there's Bradford, uh, Bolton, that's nearly all of them, maybe Oldham, something, Leicester, I don't know, I think there's eight in total. Uh, you can drop off clothes there. Uh, we will be shipping them out uh, from Bradford firstly on the 16th of um, December, and that will also apply for the other branches. 
to get to Croydon and then from there they will be shipped out across to Pakistan and most likely they will arrive at the end of the year or early January so people can benefit from your donation. So you still have time. Uh, we had a couple of uh, businesses, as we said last week, donate clothes. We've also shared posters and information with others. Bearing in mind, you can continue to follow um, Al Khair Foundation Bradford using our Facebook page or using our Twitter handle. Uh, soon we will have a WhatsApp uh, link set up or a WhatsApp line set up. So you can also drop questions and also raise queries on that WhatsApp line as well. Uh, so many ways to get in touch with us and many ways to benefit from the services uh, and also servicing, serve, serving the Ummah, if I can get my teeth straight. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, many, many chances, many opportunities. So please do take those opportunities and those chances which come your way. So let me remind you again of the number to call now, live in the studio, 01274 214299. Whilst we wait for that phone to ring, and I hope I don't have to wait two days for the phone to ring, whilst we wait for the phone to ring, oh, it's gone cold, hasn't it, recently, I was just saying, before we wait for the cold to ring, phone to ring. Temperatures are dropping, minus figures, so just be a little bit careful. Extra bit of clothing. Uh, I think there's going to be ice on the way, so just watch out for the black ice. Don't be running out onto the uh, uh, steps or down your driveway or anything like that for that matter or rushing down the road on the pavement uh, because you'd be surprised where there's a little bit of ice which is, could cause a, a little bit of damage. Also, get in the car a little bit earlier just to warm up the engine. So lots of little things we have to do uh, during these next few weeks whilst we get this little snow bite. Uh, maybe snow is on the horizons in a few days' time as well, but it will definitely be cold. Uh, and then uh, most of you, obviously, schools will be closing, I think, not this week, not this Friday, Friday after. Most likely, madrasas will be closed as well for the winter break. Um, and so, therefore, there's a couple of weeks where you can hide away uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the difficult weather, from the uh, low temperatures, keep yourself warm. Uh, but those of you who've obviously got work, you've got another week or so to carry on. Uh, before we get into the uh, back end of the year when there will be some bank holidays and things of that nature. I guess, unfortunately for many people, uh, some of the bank holidays are falling on uh, the weekend, so you cannot benefit from those bank holidays. But hey, there's always next year, inshallah, uh, where you can benefit from them. So yeah, please do call 01274 214299. And the email is there, amjid at alkhair.org. Let me see what questions uh, we have um, on the uh, chat, okay. So, as you know, we have two uh, Dal Iftar groups uh, one on the gents group, and one, uh, one is the gents group, and one is the ladies group uh, where people can pose their questions. Uh, the Dal Iftar is Markazul Iftar Wal Qada. So, let's take this question which has come through, okay. So, the question was. Assalamu alaikum, hope you are well. Apologies for the impolite message earlier. Jazakum khair for your answer. The issue is a person who is leading salah is making wudu in this way. Will we have to repeat salah behind him? Any advice how to deal with this situation? Um, Jazakum khair. However, my question was a bit different and very specific and I cannot see the answers to it in the above examples you've quoted. The Sheikh has answered my question, although I am in a predicament as a person making masa on socks, one on top of acceptable khuf is an imam at a masjid. I'm assuming from the above that I will have to repeat my salah and read behind him and also will have to have a discussion with him about this. Jazakallah for your help and apologies for the long message. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, what you would need to do is first ensure that he is not wiping on the hoof. As I've explained to you, if the hoof is being wiped upon either directly or because sufficient water is soaking through the cotton sock and reaching the hoof, then arguably the wiping of the hoof has been achieved. So before uh, you, know, you get to sort of pointing this out to him or, or kind of calling him out, it might be better to have a conversation with him that, oh, you know, Imam Saab, I notice that you have, um, you know, you wipe because, you know, you must know or you must have seen him wiping on cotton socks. Uh, so then you can ask the question that, oh, you know, I notice that you wipe on cotton socks. Is that, is that true? 
And if he says, no, I don't, I have corn socks on because I prefer to wear them uh, because they look better, but I'm actually wiping on my hoofs, then that will all be clarified and all be clear. Or he might say, yes, I do wipe on my cotton socks, but uh, uh, they go, or polyester socks for that matter, uh, but it's actually soaking through and reaching the hoof. Again, problem solved. Or he might say, no, I'm actually wiping on the cotton sock because my view is that wiping on the cotton sock is valid. Now, obviously, you need to raise a question that, okay, and I'm, you know, I'm sure you already know this, you need to ask what fiqhi madhab he adopts. So, because you would need to know that by praying behind the imam, because he needs to know uh, certain rules which apply to you. Uh, for a Shafi imam, if he does something, you know, his wudu will be nullified according to us, but not nullified according to him. Uh, so, it's always good to know, uh, if you are an imam, to make sure that you do wudu in such a way or avoid um, cir circumstances that would nullify or would your wudu would be considered nullified according to a muqtadi. Uh, obviously, according to your madhab, it doesn't, but it is mustahab uh, to avoid uh, those scenarios. So you need to have the conversation first before we assume something. Uh, no problem. Uh, may Allah bless you. I mean. Okay, so that's that question. We have another question that's come in. Uh, so let's uh, deal with that question. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Hazrat. A man fails to achieve his goal for a task. He says it was my fault due to his lack of effort, carelessness, or anything else, and that's why I failed. Another man says that had Allah wished, he would have granted you the tawfiq to do things right as required to achieve the goal. Hence, it is from Allah and Allah did not seem it right for you to achieve this goal. Sheikh, in both of these people, who is right given that they are both Muslims and believe failures and successes from Allah? This is a true problem and not based on hypothesis. I ask this in third person because I've been advised to ask questions in third person by some elders. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair for your uh, little side note, your brackets for explaining uh, the manner in which you pose this question. Uh, and uh, the answer is such that when it comes to taqdeer, and I think this is what's going on here, is there's a conversation of taqdeer and there's a conversation of a person striving uh, in terms of what they can and can't do. Okay, taqdeer is exactly how the other man has said that, you know, whatever was meant to happen will happen, it will pass, and, uh, and that's just the way it is because Allah had willed it. And if Allah had willed a certain thing to happen, then it will pass. That's just fact. Uh, so that is correct. However, when we set off on a task, we don't know what Allah has willed. Okay, so for instance, if I say, oh, I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, decorate my house, for example. I hope my wife's not listening to this. But if I said I'm going to <laughs> decorate my house by the end of the year, that's what I set myself a task to do. And I don't, and, and, I, and, I, and I just sit. I don't buy any paint. Uh, I don't buy any paintbrushes. I, I do nothing. Okay, I, I just sit there. And I don't paint anything whatsoever then uh, the house doesn't get painted, then yes, obviously Allah had willed that that would never have happened. However, I have to look at it from my perspective that I made no effort because we don't know the will of Allah. Had it been that I had made effort, okay, then that would have ha occurred. So we can't, you know, we can't stand on the day of judgment and say that, oh Allah, I did not pray because you did not, will for me to pray or I did not become Muslim uh, because you did not will for me to become a Muslim and blame Allah when it comes to these sorts of things then that is upon us yes we know without doubt that it's only bi tawfiqillah that we do anything that anything occurs any success that's why we say success belongs to Allah um, and that is correct because you can only partake in the process. That's why we always say a person who does work of deen, their success is not measured by the conclusion or the result. Because that is how Allah wills it. Their success is measured in them engaging with the task. So, you know, doing the work of deen, you know, like if say somebody is building a masjid, say, then the fact that he's engaging with that process of building a masjid, 
Yani, he's, you know, finds some land. He, he, you know, saves money to get some bricks. And then he, you know, he starts to put one brick after the other. And it takes him nine, ten years. And before he is actually finishing the masjid, before he's going to put the carpets in, he dies. So somebody might say, oh, you know, he never, he wasn't alive to see the uh, result of his efforts. You know, he did not. Allah did not give him the tawfiq to see that he wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't written for him. But his ajr, his reward is obviously for the effort that he put in. That's what the person is rewarded for. So if we look at the bigger scheme of things, absolutely correct what the second man is saying, that this is all by the will of Allah. Anything that is going to happen is going to happen by the will of Allah. But we cannot ascribe our sins. We cannot ascribe our uh, lack of efforts. We cannot ascribe these things to Allah and say Allah is the cause of them because we had choices. And this is a very complicated topic to discuss which is free will and taqdeer, predestination. And it confuses a lot of people. So I think I hopefully I've said enough to make you understand uh, but not too much to cause more confusion. Because it is a topic of, uh, uh, of a confusing matter. You know, we know that, for example, Allah creates all actions. But we do kasb. We, we, we earn the action. We choose the action. So, you know, for instance, somebody uh, punches me in the nose. So I have numerous options available to me. Option one is punch the guy back in the nose. Option two is shout at him. Option three is get a stick and hit him. Option four is to walk away. And I guess there's numerous other options. So all these options Allah has created for me. I now choose an option. So I decide to punch him back. But I don't stop at punching him back. I keep hitting him and hitting him and hitting him, hitting him, until I knock him unconscious. Now, obviously, I've done zulm. I should have hit him back equally to how he hit me. That would be parity. That would be equality. But I obviously lost my temper. So I hit him considerably more. Now if I get punished on the Day of Judgment, I can say, oh, wait a minute, what's this all about, Ya Allah? You wrote that in my taqdeer and now you're punishing me for something that you wrote in my taqdeer. Okay, and we would, it would be a catch-out, a get-out clause. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created those actions, but we earned the action. I made a choice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always knew what choice I was going to make. Even before I made the choice, but what we're trying to do is understand something with our brains and we're trying to understand Allah and taqdeer with our brains when it is beyond our understanding when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not confined by time because time is his creation and his creation cannot confine him, cannot define him, cannot limit him. So therefore for us, because we think chronologically and linearly, okay, you know, uh, one event happens after another. For us, we can we find it hard to understand then. Whereas Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is beyond that, so therefore, you know, s the future, the present, the past, they're not on on a on a kind of chronological order. They are there. So it, you know, it becomes. You see how already it's getting complicated and convoluted. Therefore, my original simple answer is what I stand by. But I hope that I've said enough uh, to give you a, a, a reasonable overview uh, of, of the concept. And that leads us to nearing the end of the first session, but not nearing the end of our questions on our ladies group, our gents group now, alhamdulillah, we have completed. Uh, we have several questions on our ladies group. Like last Wednesday, we've had no call so far on our first session. Can we make a difference in the second session and have at least a caller calling in? Okay, we will find out in due course, inshallah, because I'm not going to ask you to call in now uh, because we are about 30 seconds away from a short break. However, when we return back from the break, inshallah, we will be giving you sharing the number with you again. Obviously, I will share you the email address again. I will have a look at the emails when we're on our short break to see if any came in. And then I will share the email address with you when we return and we will carry on with more questions and answers, if not by phone, then at least by the Darul Iftar groups that I have on my phone. 
So, few minutes, inshallah, and we will return. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.